And we will put up the liturgy through share screen. Thank you, Barbara. Okay. Um, I'm just, oh, screen share. Screen My share. goodness. <laughs> it, don't do this for a week and all of a sudden you're. All right, here we are. I'm not seeing it. Uh, I've got, oh, there we are. Okay. Perfect. Perfect, thank you. Okay, let us just take a moment. Alban offered himself to the soldiers in place of his guest and teacher and was brought in bonds to the judge. Lord, Lord open our Lord. lips. And our mouth shall proclaim your praise. O God, make speed to save us. O Lord, make haste to help us. Glory, glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was, it was in the beginning, the beginning now. is now, and will be forever. Amen. Amen. The Lord is our refuge and our strength, so come let us worship. Let us say the Jubilate together. Be joyful, Be joyful in, in the Lord, Lord, all you lands. All you lands. Serve, Serve the, the Lord with gladness. And, and come, come before, before his, his presence with a song. song. Know, know this, the, the Lord himself, himself is God. Is God. He, himself he himself has made, has made us, us, and, and we, we are his. his. We, we are his people and the sheep, and the sheep of his pasture. Enter his gates with thanksgiving. Go into his courts with praise. praise. Give thanks, Give thanks to, him to him and call, and call upon, upon his, his name. name. For the Lord is good. His, his mercy is everlasting. everlasting. And his and faithfulness is yours from, from age, age to age. age. The Lord is our refuge mm -hmm. and strength. Oh, come, come, come let, let us worship. worship. Could I invite someone to read Psalm, the Psalm, please? Jackie? Okay. Psalm 63, verses 1 to 8. I have found my servant David with my holy oil. I have anointed him. My hand shall always remain with him. My arms also shall strengthen him. The enemy shall not outwit him. The wicked shall not humble him. I will crush his foes before him and strike down those who hate him. My faithfulness and steadfast love shall be with him. And in my name, his horn shall be exalted. I will set his hands on the sea and his right hand on the rivers. He shall cry to me, you are my father, my God, and the rock of my salvation. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. 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 Would someone like to read with this verse from Wisdom? I will. Thank you, Janet. For the souls of the righteous are in the hand of God, and no torment will ever touch them. In the eyes of the foolish, they seem to have died, and their departure was thought to be a disaster. And they are going from us to be their destruction but they are at peace. For though in the sight of others they were punished, their hope is full of immortality. Having been disciplined a little, they will receive great good because God tested them and found them worthy of himself. Like gold in the furnace, he tried them. And like a sacrificial burnt offering, he accepted them. In the time of their visitation, they will shine forth and will run like sparks through the stubble. 
They will govern nations and rule over peoples, and the Lord will reign over them forever. Those who trust in him will understand truth, and the faithful will abide with him in love, because grace and mercy are upon his holy ones, and he watches over his elect. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks. God. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Matthew. Glory to you, Lord Glory Jesus, Jesus Christ. Christ. Whoever welcomes you welcomes me, and whoever welcomes me welcomes the one who sent me. Whoever welcomes a prophet in the name of a prophet will receive a prophet's reward. And whoever welcomes a righteous person in the name of a righteous person will receive the reward of the righteous. And whoever gives even a cup of cold water to one of these little ones in the name of a disciple, truly I tell you, none of these will lose their reward. The Gospel of Christ. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Well, today's saint is someone called Saint Alban, and there's a town in England named after him, and I believe there's a cathedral there as well. He's quite interesting for all sorts of reasons, but let me just read you a little bit about him. Alban was a soldier in one of the Roman legions which guarded the province of Britannia early in the third century. The legion's camp was at Verulamium in the north of London. Though a pagan, Alban gave shelter to Christ a Christian priest who was fleeing persecution. When he observed the priest doing his prayers, he was moved to a question and a question him about the church's faith. The priest's replies led Alban to accept Christ as his only Lord and Savior. In the meantime, reports that the priest was hiding with Alban reached the authorities. Soldiers were sent to seize the priest. When the detail reached his dwelling, Alban met them at the doorway. He was wearing his guest's cloak the customary garb of a Christian priest, and presented himself to the soldiers as the man they were looking for. Taken before the military governor who discovered the ruse, Alban refused to offer the pagan sacrifices required by law. He was condemned to death and beheaded the same day. Alban's martyrdom is considered to have been his baptism. Now, I did a little research. I used this book called For All the Saints. I don't know if you guys can see that. It provides us with the saint, their day, their readings, and a little bit of information about them. But there was more about this man. He was really um, quite something. He did just, in theory, just what was suggested, that he hid the priest, dressed like the priest, and offered himself instead of the priest. Um, and he was taken in front of the governor, which used to be his boss, given that he was a, a Roman soldier. And the boss was frustrated and frustrated. So he said, take him away and scourge him. That will change his mind. But it didn't. And he finally became really frustrated with him and sent him off to have his head cut off. But when he did that, they walked him out to the river. And Alban looked at the river and the river dried up. So they crossed over the riverbed and at the other side, the person who was the executioner, another Roman soldier dropped his sword and said, I can't do this. This man is clearly from God. And he prayed with him and he prayed that he might either suffer with Alban or be executed himself, which in the end he was. Others took Alban 500 paces just down the hill and Alban had this incredible thirst and he prayed to God for something to drink and at his feet upsprung a spring and he drank from that. And then they, they beheaded him and his head rolled down the hill and where it stopped, another spring was created. And today that's in theory, they think that's where the cathedral was built in the town of St. Albans right where the spring grows up out of the water where his head landed. It's only one day. I mean, he did, he did all of this in one, in one day. Well, two days of listening to the priest 
and then taking the priest's place and being executed all in one day. And that was considered his baptism, but it also made him a martyr and now a saint. Any thoughts on that? I do have I'm a question. Trying, I'm trying to Go connect. I, I, my, my last brother's name is Alban, so I'm trying to connect him with, with the saint. Does he shine in the same light? Sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> like all brothers. <laughs> okay. That's not bad. If someone felt I shined in the light of a saint once in a blue moon, I would think, That's wow, it. okay, <laughs> not doing too badly. <laughs> Alban. It's an interesting name, though, isn't it? Yeah. It's not one you hear other than in this context. Has there ever been someone in your life who lived their faith in such a way that you, you, were, you were kind of taken aback by it, you were impressed by it? Anyone? Wow. The others remember this name. Pardon? There was a, uh, well, you remember Flo Reeves? Yes. Yeah. Her husband, Ken, was yes. someone I would say was as close to a saint as I've ever met. He, Can you elaborate on that? There was just something about him that he, he, true Christianity seemed to emit from him, if that's a proper verb. Uh, just goodness, Any, anything dealing I ever had with him or saw in church with him, it was always a positive, good thing. And when he passed away, and I'd known him for, I guess, 20 some odd years at that point, uh, it was a real blow to the church community, I think. Okay. It is amazing how the loss of one person can strike a community and you feel that loss tremendously, tremendously. It does create a hole, which sometimes encourages others to grow into that space. They can never replace the person who's gone, but they can create something new and vital and uh, lovely. So he impressed you. Did it, how did, the, how did it affect you? Did it change anything in your life, Bill, or in your faith? Um, I would say that uh, I can't really pin anything on it, but I do remember one thing about his funeral. He'd apparently written his own funeral service. Oh. And there was a line he had in there that sticks with me now. And he said, Lord, I forget how it started, but was help me with my disbelief. And that really stuck with me. So here was a man who, from your perspective, oozed Christianity lived like Christ in a way yeah. with goodness and helpfulness. And yet some of his last thoughts were, I've struggled with my faith. I struggle with my belief. And as I say, that is, is embedded yeah. in me because I think as any Christian, I have moments of doubt and uh, such. So uh, I quite often mm -hmm. think of that as uh, getting me back on track Mm -hmm. I think that's fantastic. Um, my sense of it is that God wants a conversation with us throughout our lives and expects us to have moments of doubt and questioning. But that's why that conversation is there for us to bring those doubts to God and explore them. Like Job. I mean, God complimented Job. He, he said, Job did the right thing. Job yelled at me he questioned me he asked me he was honest about how he felt 
And that's, that's what I'm looking for, that kind of a relationship where we can lay bare our truths. And I will be there. It's hard, though. It's hard when you have doubts. Anyone else ever doubted? I would I would be lying if I said no uh, no I never <laughs> doubted so always but you know the thing that struck me about Albin is that um you know over the course of just a few days for only a few days um how much he accomplished and how much people looked to him as an example um with such a a new faith and um I, I sometimes think that we often, or in my experience, you know, when we encounter people who've maybe just discovered a spiritual awakening and they've joined in with our churches or, or um, become adherents, we, we often play a waiting game and say, well, let's see how long this person lasts um, or if they'll be committed over a long period of time when... Um, uh, Alban shows us just how much power there is in a in a new faith. Thank you. That's a very important point. Does Alban remind you of anyone in the Bible? Well, any of the disciples who um, who gave up everything to follow Jesus puts me in mind of. Yeah, that's true. Okay, I'm going to throw you a few things. Okay, first of all, he was steadfast in his faith. He was dragged up in front of the local governor. He was beaten. He refused to change. And finally, he was executed. And water was part of his execution in a variety of ways. Uh, as well as his head being cut off, but that's a little different. Does that remind you of anyone? <laughs> Certainly. <laughs> Who? Certainly. John oh, the Baptist. Yes, he, yes, absolutely. Anybody else? Jesus. Yeah. I think um, there is some controversy as to whether or not he even ever existed, but he's been written about by Bede and a few others. Um, they think maybe he was um, a mishmash of a number of people, but in the long run, it was as if here was Christ in England at a time when England needed it, and he stood true. He went through this very similar, in a very short period, but very similar trials that Christ went through, and there were miracles at his death. It might have been something that later writers felt this was absolutely so important to the flourishing of England. I mean, he, did, he lived around 250 to 304, somewhere around there. So very early on in the growth and development of England as we know it now. Um, I think that's interesting that he's become, and it was a one day, really a one day event that has lasted almost 2000 years and has become incredibly important. One of the, the rocks of the Christian faith in England. One of the other things that struck me was when just hearing about him pretending to be the priest that was, um, is the, you know, love your neighbor as yourself. You know, that complete, that, that sort of the greatest, one of the greatest commandments that Jesus gave us and that he lived that out, you know. True. And there is no greater gift than giving your life for a friend. Yeah. As well. So he really did live the epitome of Christianity in 24 hours, didn't he? That speaks of hope to me. On some days when I wonder if I'll ever be able to do it. And this man did it in 24 hours. But um, don't you think that he might have had other situations along the way? 
that brought him to this point? Um, well, he might, but we don't know. Yeah, yeah, because sometimes, sometimes people do not recognize what what good you do, but then one day, all of a sudden, you recognize. Um, yes. Joseph went through a lot of problems and um, he, he suffered at the hands of Potiphar's wife and stuff. And then his brothers, um, all of a sudden, his brothers recognized that he was the good person all along before they were saying he was just a dreamer and, and you know, and he could do no good because he's just a little mm -hmm. brother. But um, at the end, he was the one who brought his father to, to Egypt during the, 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 um, the famine and, and so, and even part of her recognized that he was, he was just a good person all along. And, and, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. when you think about it, a lot of people, they, they'll be recognized just one day, but all along they've been doing good things all their lives. So maybe Alvin was doing things all his life, but this just just this one item, you know, because he tipped he, him over the edge. Yeah. yeah, it could be. It could be. He could. Uh, I mean, to go from zero to a hundred in such a short period of time, for most of us, would seem challenging. If, yeah, only only cars do the only cars do that. <laughs> yeah, that's true. That is true. Yeah, good point. Well done. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It might have been. Unfortunately, we have nothing else about him. You know, there really hasn't been a lot more written, and uh, we know nothing of his life prior to that. So um, we'll just have to take this. Like some of the stories in the Bible, you just have to take them as they're given, and if you can research the context, the social context, that helps but we really won't have necessarily any more information than what we're given in that short story, which is one of the challenges of faith. But um, the fact that his story has lasted this long might suggest that there was truly something important yeah. in it. Yeah. Well, I mean, it's like parables. Um, parables might not be true, but there is an awful lot of truth in it. Yes. Yes, exactly. Thank you. That's a wonderful place to end um, and to move forward. Thank you, everyone. And now we'll move to the affirmation of faith. And let us say it together. Hear, O oh, Israel. Israel. The Lord, Hear, our God. oh God, the Lord is one. Love the Lord, your Love God. the Lord with all with your heart, heart, with all your soul, soul all with all your mind, mind, and with all your strength. This is, is the, the first, first and the great commandment. commandment. The, second the second is like it. Love, love your neighbor as yourself. There is, there is no, no commandment, commandment greater than you. Barbara, would you read the intercessions for us this morning? I will, I will. Let us pray with confidence to the Lord, saying, Lord, hear our prayer. O oh Lord, guard and direct your church in the way of unity, service, and praise. Lord, hear our prayer. Give to all nations an awareness of unity of the human family. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. Cleanse our hearts of prejudice and selfishness 
and inspire us to hunger and thirst for what is right. Lord, hear our prayer. Teach us to use your creation for your greater praise, that all may share the good things you provide. Lord, hear our prayer. Strengthen all who give their energy or skill for the healing of those who are sick in body or in mind. Lord, hear our prayer. Set free all who are bound by fear and despair. Lord, hear our prayer. Grant a peaceful end and eternal rest to all who are dying and your comfort to those who mourn. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty God, you conferred on your holy martyr Alban such love for the mercy of Christ that he gave his life to save a hunted Christian. Grant us, after his example, to be so faithful in our confession of your gospel that we may shelter those who flee from persecution and bear the reproaches which threaten their lives. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Gathering our prayers and praises into one, let us pray as our Savior has taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your kingdom come, come. your Your will will be done done. on earth earth as in heaven. heaven. Give Give us today today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins our sins. As we, we forgive, forgive those, those who sin against us. us. Save, Save us from the, from the time of trial. And, and deliver, deliver us from evil. For the, the kingdom, kingdom of power, power and the glory, glory of yours. Now and forever. Amen. 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 Let us bless the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. Hallelujah. The Lord bless us and keep us. The Lord make his face shine upon us and be gracious to us. The Lord look upon us with favor and grant us peace. Amen. Amen. Thank you, everyone. Have a wonderful day. It's going to be a little bit warmer today, fortunately. (laughs) This this should be rain tonight. So we'll see what happens. Okay. <laughs> it's good for the garden.